listening to Catholic Sprout, the daily podcast for Catholic kids that strives to plant seeds of faith. Hey, Sprouts. Today is Thursday, April 18th, 2024. Today is also the feast of St. Gianna Breda Mola. I'm Sister Alicia Torres, a member of the Franciscans of the Eucharist of Chicago, and I'm here as a guest host on the Catholic Sprouts podcast to discuss the Eucharist with you. Today, we'll be talking about the Liturgy of the Eucharist, the second part of Mass. All right, so last time we talked about the Liturgy of the Word, the beginning of Mass, how we hear readings from Scripture, we focus in on the Gospel, the high point of the liturgy of the word and how the priest's preaching helps to open our hearts. We encounter God in sacred scripture and we're preparing to encounter him in the Eucharist. So here we go. The liturgy of the Eucharist is where we, in a very mysterious way, relive the Paschal mystery, which we talked about a couple of episodes ago. Jesus' passion, death, resurrection, and ascension. In a real yet mysterious way, every time the Mass is celebrated, the Paschal mystery is relived, and we get to enter into the Paschal mystery and experience it with Jesus. So, you'll probably remember that at this part of the Mass, the priest begins by praying over the bread and wine. Maybe at your parish, Families or individuals will bring up the gifts of bread and wine and the priest will receive them. If there's altar servers or a deacon, they will assist the priest. And as the priest is preparing the altar and he's praying over that bread and wine, that's a perfect time for us to offer our hearts with Jesus, to offer our petitions, to remember people that we love who might be sick or need prayers and spiritually imaginatively place them on the altar as part of our offering, our sacrifice, to unite our sacrifices with the sacrifice of Jesus. Because remember, as the priest finishes the offertory, he will say to all of us, may my sacrifice and yours, meaning you and me, may my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. And we say, may the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands, for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. All right, now, the moment we've all been waiting for. We're ready. We've heard God's word. We've, we've, we've offered our sacrifices with the sacrifice of Jesus as the gifts are prepared. And now we're entering into the Eucharistic prayer. And it's in the Eucharistic prayer The high point of the Eucharistic prayer is what we call the institution narrative, where the priest representing Jesus speaks the very words Jesus spoke at the Last Supper while he holds the bread and then holds the chalice of wine, and they are literally transformed into the body and blood, soul and divinity of Jesus. How wonderful, how miraculous. God loves us so much that he gives himself to us, his real presence. So the priest takes the bread into his hands. He looks up to heaven, up to God the Father, and he says the words of Jesus, take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body. And then he respectfully and reverently places that consecrated host, the body of Christ, back on the paten, the special gold or silver plate that holds the Eucharist. <clears throat> and then the priest takes the chalice, raises his eyes to heaven. That chalice is filled with wine. He says, take this, all of you, and drink of it. For this is the chalice of my blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which will be shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. And that wine is no longer wine, friends. That is the blood of Christ. How wonderful God loves us so much. We continue with very special prayers, and then we come to the great amen. The priest holds up the consecrated host and the consecrated wine, truly 
the real presence of Jesus. And he prays through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. And we respond from our whole heart. Amen. Shortly after this, we pray the Our Father prayer, the prayer that Jesus taught us. And then we go into the fractioning rite, where the priest breaks the consecrated host, reminding us of how Jesus allowed his body to be broken for love of us. And we pray, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. And then the priest holds up the the consecrated host and the chalice full of the precious blood of Jesus. And he says, behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. And we respond, Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. How incredible. Jesus wants to give his whole self to us. For those of us who are prepared and who have made our first communion, we can go up taking part in the communion procession, processing or walking up respectfully, reverently, with great joy to receive Jesus. The priest will hold up the host and say the body of Christ. And we respond, amen. We receive our Lord into our bodies. And we get to go back to the pew and speak to him quietly from the heart. Any words, words of love, words of gratitude, words of petition, asking him for help or telling him, Lord Jesus, I love you so much and I'm still struggling with being kind to my parents or not fighting with my brother and sisters. Please strengthen me with this Holy Communion. Strengthen me with your presence inside of me so that I can love like you love. Amazing. Jesus comes to us. After everyone is able to receive Holy Communion, we have the concluding rites. The priest gives us the final blessing. He says, the Lord be with you. We respond, and with your spirit. Then he says, may Almighty God bless you. And he makes the sign of the cross over us. May Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father. And then we receive the final blessing. The priest makes the sign of the cross over the whole assembly while he says the words, May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Then we say, Amen. And then we are dismissed. The priest, or if there's a deacon, the deacon will say to us, Go forth, the Mass is ended, or Go and announce the gospel of the Lord or go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives or go in peace. And then we respond, thanks be to God. And we are sent out from the mass with Jesus to bring the good news to the world of how much he loves us. Praise God. That is the liturgy of the Eucharist. That's it for Catholic Sprouts today. We'll be back tomorrow. But until then, continue to grow in your faith and truly sprout into the beautiful creation that God created you to be. Hi friends, you're invited to join me for the 10th National Eucharistic Congress in Indianapolis, July 17th to the 21st for a special impact session just for families called Cultivate. It'll be a wonderful experience of worship and formation. There are many ways to draw closer to Christ at the Congress through daily mass, prayer and reconciliation, and you'll even learn more about the Eucharist from some of your favorite Catholic presenters. There will also be family-friendly activities and games in the exhibit hall and outdoors at the nearby White River State Park. Won't you join me? Learn more and make plans to register today at eucharisticcongress.org. This podcast is part of the Spoke Street Network. For more great podcasts, visit spokestreet.com.